for this first section, we're going to be looking at points and lines in the plane. And so to get us going, I just want to kind of define some different words. So as I say them, you know what we're referring to. And then here in just a minute, we're also going to look at them in a picture. So the first thing I want to talk about is something called the Cartesian coordinate system. This is known as a grid system designed with perpendicular axis invented by Rene Descartes. On this coordinate system, we have things such as the x-axis, y-axis, quadrants, origin, etc. Our x-axis is the common name of the horizontal axis on a coordinate plane, a number line increasing from left to right. The y-axis is the common name of the vertical axis on a coordinate plane, a number increasing from the bottom to the top. And then once we have these two axes, we've got a vertical and a horizontal, it separates it into quadrants. One quarter of the coordinate plane created when the axes divide the plane into four sections. So you can see here, I have my x-axis. It goes um, from, it increases from left to right. Then you have your y-axis that increases from the top, from the bottom to the top. And then you have your quadrants, one, two, three, and four. And I always remember the order of these quadrants because if I connect them, you can see that this would make a C, such as calling this the coordinate plane. Once we have all this together, number five, we get the origin, the point where the two axes cross in the center of the plane, described by the ordered pair zero, zero. So here's my origin right here in the middle. Once we start creating points on this coordinate plane, we have an ordered pair. An ordered pair consists of an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, so they're always in alphabetical order there. The first coordinate of an ordered pair representing the horizontal displacement direction from the or origin is your x-coordinate, and the second coordinate of an ordered pair representing the vertical displacement and direction from the origin. So giving a point such as x comma y, it tells us from the origin how far did we move. How far to the right did we move? How far up did we move? Such as if we were taking a taxi, how would we need to move to get to a certain point? So kind of putting it all together here, let's look at this example. It says identify the location of each of the points in a specific ordered pair. So first of all, let's note this. Naming our quadrants, this is quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, it makes a C for coordinate plane. Here is our x-axis. Here is our y-axis. So if I want to look at what is the location of these points, you can see point D is the only one that's in quadrant 1. We don't argue about if A or C is in 1 or 2. We just say that A and C are both on the y-axis. And really, A in particular is at our origin, and that is the best way to describe A, not whether it's in one of the four quadrants or the X or Y axis, because it's right in the middle of everything. That would be in our origin. You'll notice point B is in quadrant two, E is on your X axis, F is in quadrant three, G is in quadrant four. So you're going for the best naming of each of these points. Now as for its specific ordered pair, let's look at this point D. Origin A, we already know, is at the point 0, 0, because the origin's always 0, 0. But D, notice, if I went to get from A to D, I would have to move one, two units to the right and one unit up. So part, point D would be the ordered pair 2, comma, 1. Say I want to look at point F, I would have to, from the origin, go to the left 2 and down 3. So this would be at the ordered pair negative 2, negative 3. As we continue our conversation, we're going to pick up some more vocabulary words as we go. So I'm going to reference back to these. I'm going to go ahead and move forward and kind of work with some examples to help us with those vocabulary words. Now that we have ordered pairs, what we need to do is learn how to put all this information together in order to graph an equation. So the first thing, way we're going to learn how to graph is by plotting points. So getting quite a few ordered pairs putting them together and creating a line. It's not the only way to create the line, it's just part one of learning how to create lines. So you have quite a few steps here at the top. So it says, you know, make a table, enter some values, select the corresponding values, plot the point, and connect them. So I've got an equation to get us going here. So these are my chosen x values, and you're gonna have similar problems on your assignments in Canvas as well. And here's the equation. 
So what I want to do is I do want to grab my scientific calculator to kind of help me out with this order of operation. And I want to kind of go over some key skills for us as we move forward in this course. If I'm taking an x value of negative 4, I want to plug it in here for this x value. So I'm going to say negative 3. Anytime I'm plugging in for a variable, I'm always going to put it in a parenthesis to help me with order of operation and as not to lose any symbols. And I'm going to put my negative 4 there. Now I like to kind of get my calculator out to help me with this just in case the equation was more complicated than this and I would do negative 3 again using my parentheses negative 4 plus 3 and that gives me a value of 15. So I would place it here so my x value is negative 4 then my y value would be positive 15. You would do this again for the next value again placing your value where your variable was using parentheses following all order of operation rules and then this would yield a value of so I'm going to go back to my calculator go over here and I will just put a 3 in there and that gives me a value of 12 jumping ahead I went ahead and filled in my 0 and my 5 just like I did above here and then I went ahead and grabbed me an extra point because I noticed these were really large values larger than the grid I'm looking at below so I'm going to go to my grid and I'm going to look at 0 3 so I would go to 0 3 and put a dot and I went ahead and grabbed positive 2 so that got a little bit closer to this other point so I would go to positive 2 negative 3 and then using my line tool within the homework I could connect those two so putting together how to plot order pairs, how to plug in values, I can help to get what my equation may look like on a grid. Now part two, what I want to do is, I don't always want to plot points. Like that seems really tedious for me to have to go and plot four or five points and figure out what this straight line looks like. Because really at minimum, I only need two points to figure out a straight line. So our second approach is going to be using intercepts. And if you look back at your notes on page 2, an x-intercept, or an intercept in general, is known as the point at which the graph of an equation crosses the x and the y axis. And so an x-intercept is the point where a graph intersects the x-axis. It's an ordered pair with a y-coordinate of 0. So when we're looking at our intercepts, it's really nice. What we're going to be able to do to find an x-intercept, we can set y equal to 0 and solve for x. Vice versa, I can go into the second step, find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0 and solving for y. So I have a brief example to help us with this. So here's my equation. Instead of taking the approach in the previous example, plugging in random numbers, I'm just going to find my intercepts. So if I'm looking for my x-intercept, my y-value is going to be 0. So if I plug in 0 for y, I get negative x equal to negative y, 5. But I can't leave that negative on the x. I want just a positive x as an answer. So negative 5 divided by negative 1 gives me positive 5. So I now have an ordered pair of 5 comma 0. And I'm going to go ahead and plot this down here. And again, your x-intercept is on your x-axis. Now let's find the y-intercept. So that means we're going to be plugging in 0 for x because I'm looking for the y-intercept. So I'll say negative 0 plus 5y equal to negative 5. This goes away, I get 5y equal to negative 5, and divide. So y is equal to negative 1. I now have an ordered pair of 0, negative 1. And now that I have two points, I can connect them to get an idea of what this equation, negative x plus 5y equals negative 5, looks like on a coordinate plane. So I hope this helps. Contact me if you have any questions along the way.